Well, hello there, my friends. Welcome back. It's Jesse, and today I have been just bombarded with like 50, 60 emails, all demanding I say something about the new Diablo 3 information dump. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Blizz just took a massive dump of information all over us, and uh, while it was pretty amazing, a lot of it is causing a stir. First off, they went ahead and changed some of the lore, which is to be expected. It's Blizzard. Apparently, the warrior from Diablo 1, who became the mysterious wanderer in Diablo 2, turns out to be King Lyric's son? So, yeah, I guess they're keeping the story in the family. I'm not sure which way they're going to go with that, but luckily for us, uh, Blizzard is releasing a book called The Book of Cain, which will talk about the lore between Diablo 2 and Diablo 3, which is pretty awesome. It's also been confirmed by the guys over at DiabloFans.com, which is a great site, by the way. Uh, go there after you're done watching this. Apparently, they removed the talisman and all the functionality associated with that, but replaced it with quest item slots, which apparently, from what they said, players get this stuff right at the beginning of the game almost, in, in Act 1. What these will do is give you special abilities, like uh, selling items directly from the battlefield, which was majorly needed, uh, the ability to salvage items, a Hearthstone-style ability that sends you back to town, rather than having uh, scrolls stack up in your inventory, which was always a problem. Um, I think those are great ideas. I really am excited about that. Also, they took the trait system and completely removed it and put all that stuff into passive skills, but apparently you can only have three passives active at a time. The biggest positive for me, though, was the announcement of the PvP existing, but not being some, like, eSport forced onto the players, which I'm very happy about. There's nothing worse than using an eSport to justify changes to a game. I'm looking at you, WoW. Let's move on to the shockers, the things that just have people up in arms today. First, apparently, you have to be connected to the internet all the time to play. Now, I read that PR release three times, trying to figure out where it said, but you can still play a limited offline version or something like that, but nothing. So either it's really bad wording, or you have to be online constantly to even start the game. Which, to me, I dislike that immensely. I, I don't know what it is about having to be online now for almost every game that is coming out. Uh, I guess it's achievement systems and keeping track of information and maybe the uh, authenticator, I, I don't know. But it seems strange to me that this, it, it's not like a, a WoW where you have to keep paying month to month to month. This is you pay once and then the game's yours. So shouldn't you be able to play it the way you want after purchase? I don't know how I feel about that. I'll leave that one to you guys. The next one, however, is, is the biggest shocker of all. Apparently, the auction house in-game will allow you to buy and sell using real, hard-earned money. We're talking about finding an item, putting it up on the auction house, and then selling it for like five bucks. I don't even know where this is going to go and how it's going to be received when it actually launches, but I can tell you this right now. Someone out there, deep down in my gut I feel this, someone out there is going to make a huge profit. It's going to make a fortune off of this. Any smart economist will tell you, whenever there's a new economy, whenever an economy emerges, someone takes advantage. And the question I think is going to be, is it going to be the gold farming organizations? Or is it going to be some like really smart kid in his bedroom? I don't know, but after Blizzard's cut, I think they take like 3%, something like that. Whatever the number is, after they're cut, you can actually make money doing this. So anyone who wants to try, it'd be a good social experiment, let me tell you. Anyone who wants to try and go and do that, by all means, uh, I would love to find out how, like, what the end game of that is. Because even I'm coming up with, like, I wonder if I can get a bunch of people together and we could, like, corner the market on, like, Stones of Jordan and then just sell those, and when someone else tries to sell them, we buy them, and then double the price. Like, you know that's gonna happen. You know that will happen. So I guess I'll leave it up to you guys. What do you think about this? Should the fans focus on a game right before the beta? Really be like, how much money we can make off this game? It seems weird, but I think that's what's happening right now. I don't know. I'll leave it up to you guys. Let me know what you think about the changes to Diablo 3. For more information, head over to DiabloFans.com. Uh, definitely your best source for information. And um, that's it. I look forward to this game now more than ever. I definitely have to play it. And uh, 
Here's hoping some beta videos soon. Oh, wink, wink.